So I'm here inside the Memorial Church, and one of the things that we'd like to focus on with this video update is the mapping of space uh, here at Jamestown over time. And one of the things that we've noticed as we've excavated the Memorial Church here over the winter of 2016-2017 is the accurate notes that were taken from the past. And so we here at the project map the archaeology uh, using paper. Um, we use digital files and then three-dimensional uh, graphics. And we marry all of those together to create an even better perspective of the past, uh, building on our, our forefathers. So one of the new technologies that we're exploring is using three-dimensional structuring or mapping using uh, pixels. So every camera that we have uh, in modern times, your cell phone, uh, or even your um, point-and-shoot camera, digital camera, is recording a pixel depth uh, giving you actual 3D information. So you can't go back and use this on historic photographs of the church because it doesn't have depth. But with modern cameras, we can. And so we use various programs to recombine those photo images to create a 3D map. And what that gives us and our, our, the archaeologists who come after us is a recorded perspective of what we saw. So I'm sitting here in front of the exposed floor of the 1617 church, what we believe is 1617 church, where democracy started. And the exploration of, of the church and democracy is pressed by uh, the fact that in 1619, um, the uh, unicameral system of government met inside this church, and 2019 is our 400th anniversary. So we'll be celebrating that amongst other things here at Jamestown. So that's, that's kind of uh, driving the archaeology, but, it, but again, it has given us this perspective of the past and present with mapping. Um, so the process is simple. You um, walk around or, or uh, think of the feature or the object that you're mapping as a, in the center of a clock dial, and you just go around from 1 to 12, taking photos at different angles uh, as needed, so straight down and uh, 45, 90 degree angles, etc. And then programs will stitch that back together, various programs, and give you that 3D map. Um, what that allows us to do is to come up with very accurate measurements. Well, not only to visualize, but also accurate measurements. Um, but I want to stress that we do use that in combination with our GIS program and even the paper maps. And we use those all the time. We go back. Uh, we have a digital cataloging system with all our notes and when we're writing things up, writing reports or reviewing the past, we just go back and look those up and we're able to, to uh, talk about or people in the future can see what we did. So uh, when you're taking the shots, it's good not to have raking light, but we're going to, for the demonstration of this video, we're going to go ahead and take it, um, take the the images and then we'll see how they come out but uh, this is the process shoot you just um, walk around the feature now for for uh, what we do we use a DSLR we try not to use a cell phone but uh, and the reason is you want to fix depth of field um, you don't want to autofocus and so I'm just doing this for demonstration processes but you could use this um, with a fair amount of accuracy. So here I am in the comfort at my desk in the nice warm uh, office here and I brought the pictures in and so one of the first things you do is align the photos and that's just uh, this program we're using Agisoft today uh, aligns all the photos and the pixel depths and so you can kind of see sort of a rough outline of what I'm mapping. Um, you can choose deeper pixels so more uh, or less uh, in your model and uh, you can actually render it and see how it came out So the next level is to build a dense cloud and that starts to look a little more realistic and that you know You can start to see holes or here in the corner where you're sort of lacking information um, And then the next thing is really to build a mesh or a wire frame and that's what this is So now we have a three-dimensional scaled uh, mesh model with topography from those points so it's, it's connecting each of the points together and making a surface. And then finally, the image is draped onto that mesh, and you get 
uh, sort of photorealistic 3D uh, images. Uh, you can still see data missing uh, in the background, but I caution that this is only 16 pictures, I believe, uh, to accomplish the task. So that's pretty quick. It only took us a few minutes to take these shots and then render them together um, into a measured uh, graphic 3D, 3D image that we can use um, so people can see what we're doing. So here's a church floor from the past, a uh, late 18th, early 19th century cemetery wall, and then the modern church floor. So programs like this aren't a uh, be-all, end-all of archaeological mapping. They just supplement uh, what we've always done and allow us to capture sort of a moment in time, a moment of discovery. Um, and then from these, we can build digital models and reconstruct things. Um, so it's very important and a new sort of facet to our program. So uh, we'll continue to develop and work on these tools and incorporate them uh, into our process as they come down the pipeline. Uh, but uh, yeah, very fascinating and very fun to play with.